Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. This is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Tonight, we're going to talk about taking second place, sharing, being part of the being part of the experience with others and in the dating scene, why any guy with value will not will not date a woman that's dating other men. He will not share. He doesn't uh, participate in all this nonsense. And the reason why I, I think this is important, there's an article here, and I'm going to read it here in a second. And it's about a, a woman who's torn between a guy that's great in bed and a guy that's great everywhere else. And the advice given to her, and why I don't think a lot of women would share the truth about dating two guys. Now, you could say the same thing about women, that if a guy says, you know, I'm just into casual dating right now, I'm, I'm not into anything serious. And then if the woman were to ask, are you dating other people? And he says, I am. A lot of guys or a lot of girls would tap out. And that's okay. I get that. You know, when you're in the right place in your life for a relationship, um, a lot, I think the quality people will not, will not date multiple people at the same time. Now, as a guy, if you're just into the casual scene, that's what you're looking for. Same thing as a woman. If you're into the casual scene, all you're wanting to do is just casually date, have your flings, have your fun. And that's fine. But I think someone of real substance, won't, they won't participate in that. Someone that's got some, some self-pride, I don't think they participate in that. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, I'll read the article and we'll talk about it. But if you think I'm wrong, you know, let me know below. I always like to hear what you guys think. So we have uh, here a an article from The Guardian from Dear uh, Maria, or Mariella? Mariella, I guess. One is a great guy, the other is good in bed. Who do I choose? Let me record this for us. Neither sounds like a long-term prospect, so as long as you're not making promises you can't keep, why not enjoy both for the time being, says Mariella Frostrup. The dilemma. Having been single for some time, two men have recently come into my life. Personality-wise, one is everything I want, fun, silly, and intellectual. We clicked from the start. However, the bedroom has been a little odd, stilted, and a bit awkward. I'm attracted to him, love kissing him, but the chemistry isn't there. I'm wondering if it's nerves and might get better. He mentioned his ex didn't have a high drive, and they were almost uh, like loveless relationships, so he could be out of practice. The other guy who I'm seeing is more on the side is really good in bed. There's an intense uh, chemistry between us, very primal and instinctive. It's a strange dynamic, though, as we hardly speak. He comes around, and we jump into bed. I don't know him at all. So what I find interesting is that, I mean, as guys, I guess we could say we probably go through the same thing, where you really like hanging around with a woman, and and you enjoy her your time with her. And then there's another woman that you have this intense passion for, I guess you'd say. But if that were the case, we would either say, I want the girlfriend material, or um, I want the girl with all the energy and the fun. But unless you're having good energy and fun, so to speak, with the first one, I don't think you'd stick around. Uh, me personally, I'd think that, you know, long-term relationships, like I said, the butterflies, the, the chemistry, all that kind of stuff, that disappears after, you know, a, a month. It, it usually disappears. But too often in, in a relationship situation like this, the woman will choose the butterflies. And then when the butterflies fade, she goes looking around for the nice guy or the good guy and he's gone, right? He's, he's moved on. So in a case like this, I'm, I'm surprised that, that more women don't say, this guy's got everything but that one thing I want. And why not help him learn? How, why not help him kind of understand what to do and what pushes your buttons and, and how to make you happy? I mean, that's one thing you need to work on. Now, the other guy where you have all this energy and fun, you don't even know him. And I can tell you now, if the guy's cool with that, he's just he's just playing along. He's just having a good time. So you're never going to have anything long term with this guy. So uh, they continue on here. Uh, I'm trying to can, uh, go with my head and focus on the first guy because this could be a relationship with legs. At the same time, when he's not there, I can't help reaching for my phone and they asking the other guy to come around. I don't want a relationship with him. At least I don't. I think I don't. But the bedroom is so good. Uh, I think I know how to resolve this. Cut the bedroom guy out, but it's easier said than done. Again, those little butterflies and the fifis, right? All the feelings. And again, we all like a good bedroom activity. But you notice that, again, the, the minute the other guy's gone, the hand goes over to that phone and makes, makes a, a booty call, right? 
So Mariella replies, there's another option. It might seem greedy, but how about you stall for a while and keep them both? As anyone who's settled down will tell you, putting all your eggs in one basket may be tidier, but it leaves little room for surprises. See again, the fields, we want those surprises. The butterflies, they like that, right? It's all about the surprises and the excitement. When we make investments, we're encouraged to diversify. And I think the same can be true uh, when you're tra uh, trawling for a partner. All varieties of prospective candidate will wind up in your net and it's only as you dispense with the throwaways that you'll uncover your prize. Looking for a lover tends to, uh, looking for a lover for keeps rather than just for kicks means working out not just what you want, the non-negotiables, but also what you really don't. Such wisdom is rarely purely instinctive and comes from hands-on experience. You've managed to narrow down your desires to two choices, each of whom has something you fancy. Until you stumble on a man who has it all, why not take the pleasure in your current bounty? Again, how many men really have it all? How many guys are 100% everything you need and you have to make zero, zero um, sacrifices for? How, you know, we talk about this all the time. Again, the entitled, I want Mr. Perfect. I want Mr. Exact. I want Mr. Right. That's putting a lot of pressure on the guys and that's putting a lot of pressure on yourself to find Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect does not exist, okay? What you have to do is you do have to take some sacrifices. You know, as guys, as guys, we can say the same thing. Well, you know, I like someone that's this body type, but she's more this body type. It's close. It's maybe 70% of what I want, but I'll make that sacrifice. Or I like someone that's really active, but she likes running and I'm a, I go to the gym. That's fine. Again, we're not looking for the exact max mats matches. However, here, Again, why not Why not work on one? Why not take the guy that's 80% or 90% of what you want and help him in the one area? Because that takes effort and that takes risk. And that's just not what people do nowadays. Such wisdom is rarely purely instinctive and comes from hands-on experience. You've managed to narrow down your desires to two choices, each of whom has something you fancy. Until you stumble on a man who has it all, why not just take pleasure in your current bounty? So long as you're not making promises you won't keep, you're not damaging anyone in the process. If you are frank about your desire to keep things uncomplicated with both of them, then there's then no one can say they were misled. I appreciate it's not a long-term solution, but it takes the heat off the moment. And you know, I agree with this. I, I always tell guys, look, if you're just out there playing the field and you don't want a long-term relationship, tell everybody you're involved that you just want something casual. And if they're okay with that, then you, you can continue on guilt-free. The problem in this situation though still comes down to you, you're going to end up, if, if you're honest and you tell the guys you're keeping it casual, the good guy that maybe wants a relationship, he's still going to move on looking for a relationship. He's going to see that you're not long-term and if you're, if you're getting your fix and your fun from somewhere else, you're not going to really be helping him with his issues in the bedroom. So I think that's going to fall apart. And what are you going to be left with? going to be left with a player and the player's not going to stick. I mean, he'll stick around and help you out in the bedroom, but he's also got other people he's doing the same to, and he'll move on at some point if, if things dry out or if you want to get more serious uh, because of the butterflies and all that, he's going to bounce. We know this is how it happens. In the end, uh, you're going to lose twice. And I still think this is something that too many uh, women fall into a, a trap with is that you do this when you're 26 and 28. And I get that. But then you also want that when you're 30 and 34 and 38 and 42. There's article after article after article where women play the field and they have their fun, but they don't want to settle for Mr. Boring or Mr., as they call it, you know, having legs for the relationship, someone that'll last a long time because they miss those feelings. Well, you can't have that forever. At some point, you have to settle down. And if you screw yourself up by thinking you can have it all, and many times you wait too long and end up with nothing. And again, we can see this over and over again. Uh, she continues on, having been single for plenty of my first four decades, I know how desperately you start longing for a more permanent arrangement. So if she's being single for plenty of your first four decades, that puts her at least north of 40. Uh, the author, this is the author. Uh, cohabitation at its most fundamental means you don't o always have to carry your, your cleanser, your toothbrush, and a spare pair of knickers in your handbag. 
Auditioning prospective partners definitely loses its allure when it becomes serious. And it's all too easy to get to a point where you're grabbing at anyone who's upright and passes close enough by. This is what we're talking about. At a certain point, you start realizing that your prospects start fading and fading and fading, and you get more and more desperate. Your choices are fewer and fewer. And as she says right here in her own words, you start grabbing at anyone who's upright and passes close by. It's not, excuse me, that's not the way any of us makes the best choices. And I'm worried that's the position for, from which you are trying to make this one. Both these guys sound worthy of a dalliance, but anything more long-term would, I suspect, run into difficulty. Comparing a man who inspires you intellectually and makes you laugh with a guy who fulfills all your horizontal desires means you're not comparing like with like. So whoever you choose, you'll be hankering af after the assets of the other. And again, I'm going to say, why not teach the guy that has almost everything you want? Why not help him come to uh, satisfy you in the bedroom? If, if you can do that with him, then you've got everything you want. But again, that takes a little bit of work, a little bit of effort. Why not help him learn that chemistry? I guarantee you, if he's really into you, he will be more than, than willing and, and um, a helpful partner. Because guys that like their girls want them happy. And, you know, in a, in a normal traditional relationship, if a girl says, you know what, I really like this and this really gets me going and if you do this, it drives me nuts, guys will do it constantly because that benefits us because then we also get some action too, right? She says, at present you have plenty of quantity, but neither man is of the quality to sustain a long-term arrangement. It's not the end of the world. At some point, I dare say, you'll tire of the compromise required with both and at least one of them will tire of feeling inadequate. With choice comes comparisons, and nobody can possibly tick all your boxes, so it's as good as time as any to evaluate what you can't live without. Panicking that you'll never find the perfect partner can cause you to overlook inconvenient details. It's a good thing to be less tolerant, but not when you can start to accept the unacceptable. You don't know yet whether you can coax the beast from your one damaged companion, or whether your lover boy has hidden intellectual depths. I dare say if you read back your own letter, you'll come to the same conclusion as me, that neither justifies sporting a Mr. Right tattoo. So neither one's going to work. Throw them both away at some point and start over again. How convenient. But when you do this, again, one's 90% of what you want, one's 80% of what you want. Eh, discard it. I'll keep looking until I find Mr. Right. If you look too long, you know, the old expression I heard one time was, don't throw away a diamond to pick up a pebble. Meaning, you know, you may have something really rare and beautiful and, and valuable, but just because it's not quite exactly what you're looking for, don't throw that away to pick up something on the ground and keep to keep picking and looking. Sometimes when you find a little bit of a diamond in the rough, you just need to polish it a little bit. Now, this first guy that she's talking about that's intellectual and funny and everything's right except for the, the stimulation uh, factor, that's a situation where you just need to take some time and polish him, and I think he'll come along. But she's not even at that point, see? She's not even thinking about it. The first thing she does is pick up the phone, calls the other guy that's already got that down, but has really she knows nothing about. Too often, this is what happens in society today. It's very easy to throw away that unpolished diamond and keep trying to pick up pebbles to look for the perfect thing. And here's an article that basically recommends it. Just keep looking. Neither one's quite right. But when you, when you look, and, and this is true for men and women in some cases, okay? As you age, my muscle definition is not nearly what it was when I was 25, nor is my strength, nor is my stamina, nor is a lot of things uh, physically about, about me. Now, could I get back there? Sure. It takes a lot more work than it did. At 25, I could eat three pizzas a week and a tub of ice cream and still have a, a six pack. Not anymore. It takes a lot more work when you get older. Well, it's the same thing for women as it is for men. It does get more challenging as you get older. Men can overcome this, though, by having good finances, by having a good personality, um, by being, you know, slightly skilled in the bedroom, I guess you could say, and by having an interesting life. Women, again, they primarily bring youth, beauty, and the um, sensuality with it, right? And as that fades, their prospects are going to get fewer and fewer. So why not take the time that if you found a guy that likes you, and he's that diamond in the rough. Why not just polish that a little bit? But instead, just throw it away and start over. And this and this is a, a someone that that is an advice column. So if women are hearing this, I think they're being I think they're being lied to. And I think in the long run, it's going to hurt many of them. 
If you could amalgamate your two lovers, you'd have the ideal man, but sadly that's not an option. Perhaps the answer is to lighten up on your quest a bit. You've got two men who, between them, fulfill your needs, and I can't help thinking that's better than one who doesn't. How about you just try and enjoy things as they are for a little while? I'm the first person to argue that when it comes to making large-term choice, we all need to be prepared to make compromises, but sometimes it's nice to just slip into cruise control and enjoy the ride. Slip that cruise control and enjoy the ride right into the wall. And that's what happens time and time and time again. So I, you know, there's really not much I can add to this. I think I've said it all. You know, too many times, if you're not going to make the right choices and you wait too long, you're going to let the good ones slip through your fingers. And then in the end, we've said it before, where have all the good guys gone? Where have all the good men gone? They're going to go with women that will help polish them up a little bit and will be uh, a good a good relationship for them. Or they do like the rest of us had and just said, eh, the game's not even worth it. It's rigged against me and I don't want to play. Guys, if you'd like to support my work, links are below. Thank you for all of you that have. And the best way you can support me is to like, comment, and share. Make sure if you've subscribed to me previously, double check that you're still subscribed. I've had a lot of subscribers say that they've been unsubscribed and are not getting notifications anymore. So double check that if you are subscribed and uh, you want those notifications, make sure that's checkmarked. Guys, I'll leave it there. This is Better Bachelor. I'm Joker. And remember, the wise warrior avoids the battle. Thank you.